All right, good morning, everyone. We are gonna go ahead and call to order the August 1st meeting of the Regional Transportation Commission. Can I have a roll call, please? Good morning, commissioners. Commissioner Peterson? Here. Commissioner Sandy Brown? Here. Commissioner Johnson? Here. Commissioner Montesino? Not here yet. Commissioner Alternate Schifrin? Here. Commissioner Quinn? Commissioner Alternate Quinn? Here. Commissioner Koenig is not here either. Commissioner McPherson? Commissioner Kristen Brown? Here. Commissioner Alternate, I'm sorry, Commissioner Pegler? Here. Commissioner Watkin? Here. And uh, we have our Caltrans uh, representative. Let me just see if he's on the line. David. I'm going to promote you, David. Give me just a minute. Good morning. Oh, Kelly. I'm sorry, Kelly. We're just doing roll call. All right. I don't know if he can hear us. Kelly, can you hear us? It doesn't look like it. Kelly, can you hear us? Oh, hey, sorry. Yes, okay, I can hear you. Go. Okay, thank you. All right, you have a quorum. Great. Uh, we will move on now to consider any AB 2449 just cause and emergency circumstances requests. We do not have any requests, Chair. Okay. Uh, in that case, are there any additions or deletions to our consent or regular agendas today? We did post two handouts on our website, a handout for item 18 and a handout for item 19. Great. Uh, and then a review of items to be discussed in closed session. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chair. We have um, four items in two different portions of the closed session today. Um, we'll start off with the items for, related to labor negotiations and real property negotiations. And then at the end of the, following the end of the open session portion of the meeting, we'll have a second closed session related to the executive director recruitment and labor negotiations related to that position. Great. Uh, is there any public comment on our closed session items? Being none in person, are there any online? Okay, uh, with that, we will recess to closed session and uh, return hopefully shortly. All right, welcome back everyone. We are going to return to open session. Can we get a report out on the items discussed in closed session? Thank you, Madam Chair. So the commission had two items in closed session. First one was labor negotiations. There was no reportable action from that closed session. The second uh, closed session related to real property negotiations. During that closed session, the commission voted unanimously to authorize us, uh, staff to make offers for the property interests identified at the appraised values. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on now to oral communications. This is an opportunity for members of the public to address the commission on any items that are not on today's agenda. Any public comment in chambers today? Seeing none, we will go to Zoom. Michael Saint. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair and uh, Commissioner. Um, can you hear me, Rob? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, please do not mistake the next uh, comments as support for the Ox Lane project. Uh, as we all are aware, it will be for the next several years, uh, delayed and sitting in Highway 1 traffic. I'm amazed at how well the project is managed and how you manage to keep four lanes open most of the time. Kudos to all responsible for their, these efforts. I'm also very impressed by the bicycle pedestrian overcrossing that she had to clear. Now let's continue with my biggest concern and that's climate change. My question is why are politicians and citizens ignoring climate change? 
It's because our natural tendency is to prioritize short-term advantages regarding transportation, consumption, and living habits that lead to more carbon emissions than tackling the long-term goals of reducing carbon emissions through green sustainable projects. Question two is why don't people react to climate change? They specifically uh, consider it too small to make a difference and choose to do nothing or worse even, create with a larger carbon footprint. So where does Caltrans and our RTC fit into these climate change questions? They have chosen the Oxlane project as a short-term solution instead of a long-term solution of a transportation system of green sustainable mass transit would be better. Their reaction to climate change has been widening Highway 1 for single occupancy vehicles and destroying thousands of trees in the process. Unfortunately, the majority of our leaders would choose environmentally detrimental jobs and industry and political security over a greener, sustainable future that doesn't contribute to climate change. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Any further comments online? We do not have any other comments. All right. Okay, we are gonna go ahead and move on then to our consent agenda. Uh, is there any member of the commission that would like to remove an item from consent? Seeing none, is there any public comment on our consent? Seeing none in the room, any online? No, we okay. do not. Move the consent agenda, second. second. All right, second, did you got, uh, okay. okay. Commissioner Schifrin and Commissioner Hernandez. Great. Okay, uh, all in, well, we don't have anyone online, right? No, all in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed, any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. We will move on to our regular agenda. We'll start with oral reports from any of the commissioners. None at this end, any at this end? Wow, we are efficient today. All right, uh, we'll move on to item 26, our director's report. Well, now I'll slow you down. Uh, good morning, commissioners. Um, there are a few things I'd like to, to make you aware of. Uh, first is the RTC received a $1.3 million Caltrans Climate Adaptation Planning Grant for climate resilience planning at four locations along the Santa Cruz Branch Rail Line. The project will develop short, medium, and long-term climate resilient concepts for projects on the branch line at the four locations most vulnerable to climate hazards. These are the Capitola Bluffs, La Silva Beach and Manresa Bluffs, Park and Slough Rail Crossing, and Pajaro River Railroad Bridge. I'd like to thank RTC staff Grace Blakesley and Ginger Dakar for their work preparing this successful application. Uh, next, as you noticed, we didn't have anything on the zero emission passenger rail trail uh, on our agenda, so I am going to talk about it on my report. Um, we've wrapped up the public outreach for milestone two of the project and we'll be providing an update at uh, our September meeting. Uh, during this outreach, staff hosted two in-person public open houses and a virtual open house. More than 75 community members attended the in-person open houses and more than 900 users visited the virtual open house. Over 500 comments were received on the proposed uh, vehicle types and initial concept alignment. Uh, in addition to the open houses, uh, staff conducted uh, numerous partner agency briefings and presentations through the last couple months. Uh, these meetings have focused on uh, information sharing and gathering feedback to help refine the initial concept alignment. The project uh, will now move to milestone three that includes a refinement, a refined concept alignment and station and layover facility and maintenance locations. Public input on this work will be sought in the fall this year. Uh, there's one item on today's consent agenda that I'd like to highlight. The Measure D annual report for fiscal year 22-23 has been released. Measure D ordinance requires that the Measure D Taxpayer Oversight Committee review audits and expenditure reports each fiscal year from each of the agencies that receive Measure D funds and report their findings to the public through an annual report. The annual report includes the findings of the Taxpayer Oversight Committee and highlights projects throughout the county that were completed using Measure D funds. The report is available on our website 
in both English and Spanish. I'd like to thank the Taxpayer Oversight Committee for their work reviewing the audits and expenditure reports and putting the annual report together. And on the subject of committees, uh, applications are currently being accepted for open positions on our Elderly and Disabled Transportation Advisory Committee. Uh, there are open positions for representatives across the county. Public participation is critical for our transportation planning process. We encourage community members to apply to serve on this committee. Uh, applications can be found on our website. Um, bless you. Uh, lastly, uh, as we approach the, the end of my tenure here as your interim executive director, I wanna thank the commissioners for the opportunity you give me to serve the people of Santa Cruz County. Uh, hopefully I was able to continue the good work done by my predecessors and make a few po small positive steps during my time here in your beautiful county. I'd like to thank staff for their support and all their hard work. They're really the key to our success as an agency. And I'd also like to thank the members of the community for welcome, welcoming me and sharing their passion uh, and their visions. That concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, any comments on the director's report from commissioners? Yes, please. I have a question actually. Can you tell us where in the process of uh, planning the alignment, realignment and all the, the rest of the major work on the corridor, that we'll be working with the transit district to figure out what the connecting bus routes are to the various stations and so forth. In other words, it's a, it has to be in some to some degree an iterative process. It's not like we can design this rail and then go to the it's all done. Here's where it's going to be, and then go to the transit district and ask, you know, now will you help serve the stations with us or something? So, where in the process do we actually have a vigorous? decision to have to ask the transit district to actually plan their connections that move laterally from the tracks. So we we have already started conversations with them and our team uh, met with uh, the Corey Aldridge, the, the new director and, and members of his team. I believe it was yesterday or the day before yesterday. Uh, and so we're, we're, we're starting that work and we recognize the importance of doing it. Um, and the key role that the transit agency is going to play in, in the success of the, of the rail line. Thanks. I'll be bringing that up at the transit district side as well. <laughs> Fantastic. Any further questions or comments from commissioners? All right. Any public comment on our director's report? <laughs> Seeing none in person, any online? We have none online. Okay. We'll move on now to item 27, our Caltrans report. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, Commissioner. I just want to do a quick audio check to see if I'm through okay. Yeah, we can hear you. Here you're fine. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Good morning. First, my name is Kelly McClendon. I uh, started as a planner for as the branch chief of the District 5 Regional Planning Branch uh, a couple of weeks ago. I have uh, experience with, I, I'm most recently from headquarters in the office of freight, and uh, my previous experience with District 5, including serving as the Santa Cruz liaison uh, back in 2014 through 2017. So I'm really excited to be back and uh, to be working with SECRTC uh, and, and the rest of the North region for District 5. I just had two uh, quick announcements today. The first one is, uh, coincidentally, it's regarding uh, one of the informational items on the consent agenda that passed. This is item 13. I have a quick status update on that. And this is for the 41st to Soquel Avenue project cost overrun that you saw on the consent agenda. I, I wanted to just mention that Caltrans District 5 really appreciates the commission's support at the June meeting to come up with a approach to resolve the cost overruns. And we are continually working very closely with RTC staff to uh, process the cooperative agreement that is included uh, in the consent agenda and we plan to work quickly with the staff to execute it following today's meeting. We've also been working on all of the follow-up questions related to the audit and the project and the cost overruns, and we'll continue to answer all of the RTC's questions and until they've all been addressed. 
And in fact, additional follow-up information has been sent over. It's not reflected in the packet because it was sent over last week. And the last thing I want to clarify is that there's a part of the reasoning for these cost overruns is the increased um, the increased support costs due to a significant number of design changes that we're processing as construction change order change orders. Uh, change orders are pretty typical in construction. And in this case, they're due to the variance between the existing conditions that we're seeing in the field and then what we have in the final design plans. Those changes are costly and, and are pretty typical, especially for projects of this scale. And uh, they, they involve costs because they involve a lot of uh, Caltrans reviews and coordinations with the consultant uh, and the engineer of record for the project. So that's a quick update and we'll continue working with RTC staff and we uh, really appreciate our partnership and and uh, we're looking forward to taking the next steps and getting the project implemented. My second announcement is a reminder. I think we've brought this information to the commission previously, but as we near the end of the summer construction period, it's a good time to send another reminder. Uh, District 5 has a number of partial and full closures in Santa Cruz County and throughout the district. Many of these are during nighttime work. We'll continue to send uh, up-to-date information through our public information office, through social media posts and news release, uh, so that traveling uh, the travelers can plan accordingly. And we wanted to remind everybody that if, if anyone's making travel plans, you can look at the closure, the Caltrans lane closure portal. Uh, it, this gives you a seven day look ahead for any planned closures in the next week. And that website can be found in the resources section of our project update list in the agenda packet. That's all I have and I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Is there any public comment? Seeing none in person, seeing none online. All right, thank you very much. We're gonna move on to item 28, a presentation from the city of Santa Cruz. Welcome. Good morning, commission. My name is Nathan Nguyen. I'm the director of public works for the city of Santa Cruz. Um, I, can, well, I, can, I can do it from here and I'll, I'll just go and use these notes. Uh, first off, thank you for having me. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to give an update on all of the print transportation projects that are happening in the city of Santa Cruz. Uh, there's quite a bit to go over. Um, and so I'll, I have about 20 or so slides. I'll try to run through them fairly quickly for you guys and kind of save questions towards the end. Um, oh, do I need to click or the... Okay, so here in front of you is an overview of the number of projects that I'll kind of go over with you guys. A uh, big part of the level of work that we've been working on is the West Cliff recovery. We'll go over some of the damages as well as oh, that. Oh, sorry. Um, some of the damages that were sustained over the past couple of years and that level of effort that we're putting into restoring and repairing the coastline. Uh, and then we'll talk about some of the completed projects, paving projects that we've done uh, last year and into the spring. And then we have some really great projects that are going to be coming up in the next one to two year time frame um, that are going to be quite transformative as we talk about our downtown and uh, connectivity to some of the other uh, major trans um, activity centers. And then we talk about the future projects, which I'm also very excited about, um, our downtown expansion plan and our Bay Corridor uh, project that we're working on. So with that, I'll, I'll go ahead and dive in. Okay, so this first image uh, is really just to give you uh, some context with the number of damages that were sustained the past uh, couple of years on Long West Cliff. Um, most notably, the biggest project that we have out there is the Bethany Curve Project. Um, in January 2023, of course, there was a high swell, um, high tide event that damaged much of the coastline, not just in Santa Cruz, but of course, along Capitola and Aptos. Um, the team has been working, my team, uh, the city has been working actively to get funding in place. Most notably, we're using the FHWA Emergency Opening Program for funding uh, the repairs. 
However, we also uh, are appreciative that the RTC provided, I believe it was $1 million of a con RTC consolidated block grant for the Bethany Curve project, as well as uh, Senator Laird was able to provide a $1 million earmark towards that project. And so I'll, I'll kind of go a little bit more in detail uh, about uh, what that looks like today. So this next slide right here is just to give you, uh, again, an overview of the repairs that have occurred over the last year. Uh, because we're using an emergency opening funding, we were able to directly negotiate a contract uh, with Granite Construction. We had some challenges early on uh, in, in the summer of 23 to try to get a contractor uh, on board, knowing that there was too many uh, variables for them to bid. And so uh, over time, we were able to get in direct, uh, a direct contract. And as you can see with these photos of here, we've made uh, a lot of headway on the 900 block, as well as we're working on the 1000 block. Unfortunately, uh, uh, we had to get, endure another winter, and so additional damages were sustained along West Cliff. And you can see that there on the 944. We have a sinkhole out there right now. Um, and then there's another wall that we're working on on 1030. Um, we want to also re recognize and acknowledge the collaboration we've had with the Coastal Commission and our staff on issuing emergency coastal development permits, as well as the Army Corps and um, Fish and Wildlife and the Water Board as well. Um, I can uh, say that we are going towards a completion towards November of 2024 on these 100 or the 900 and 1000 block. So we are hoping to restore West Cliff to two way uh, by the end of this year. Uh, there are additional damages that were on that last slide that we're going to continue to work through uh, into the next year. And we just kind of hope that we have a mild <laughs> a winter in, in 24, 25. So this photo is as Bethany curve as you see it today, um, a very massive, um, uh, amount of uh, rubble was removed in order to build this new seawall that's going to be coming in. One of the improvements that we are going to be making with this new uh, seawall here in this culvert is extending the actual seawall to connect to the uh, new wall that we built at 1016 West Cliff, as well as raise the elevation of the roadway about 12 to uh, 18 inches. Uh, as this location has continually been hammered over the years with these high side, high swell events that overtop the bridge or, or the culvert. Um, and so we're doing our best to try to minimize uh, uh, that from occurring in the future. However, when working with the Coastal Commission as well, uh, we had to make sure that we weren't building seaward. So we had to make sure that we were building it uh, inland. And so there is some minor widening when it comes to the uh, path, but uh, nothing significant at, at this time. But we are hoping to have this complete by uh, the end of November. Okay, so we'll go through some recently completed projects that we had here at the city. Uh, first up is our 2024 paving program. Um, this is uh, on Ocean Street uh, between Felker and Water Street. Hopefully you've seen that as you've entered the city, we've added a lot of green striping and protected bike lanes. Uh, did a little bit of narrowing of the travel lanes as well. Um, we've also included San Lorenzo Boulevard as a part of that uh, paving project. And we did a lane reduction there um, over at Riverside and San Lorenzo Boulevard to reduce conflicts um, at that particular intersection. And it's it's been that way for many decades. So we were happy to make some of those uh, further improvements. Um, and then you can see in this photo right here, we even have a, essentially like a two-stage left turn uh, for the bicyclists to go northbound on Ocean Street. Okay, next up was a major project that was completed last year was the Metro Interim Operations. Um, as uh, if any of you have been downtown in the last uh, year or so, you can imagine, you can see a lot of construction is happening. Um, I'm happy to say that the kickoff of the spring for the Metro uh, Pacific North Station project um, has occurred. And so we were able to relocate all of Metro's uh, operations onto city roadways that include uh, Front Street and River Street South by eliminating uh, a park lane as well as a travel lane in some locations. Um, uh, there's been there was some uh, initial hiccups along the way as far as moving an entire uh, metro operation onto the roadway system, but um, by all accounts it's been fairly successful. There's been uh, actually uh, positivity when it comes to the amount of activity that's happening along Front Street as well as the River Walk now, uh, or, or along River South, and so uh, that will be in place for another two years. Anticipate we're anticipating the Metro um, Pacific North Station project to be completed in 2026. Okay, so some current projects that we're working on. Most notably is the Rail Trail Segment 7 Phase 2. Um, this project, we ran into some issues uh, with regards to some of the utility crossings for our wastewater treatment facility, as well as the two historic uh, winters that we had to endure. And so this project actually um, is 
still in line to receive some additional FEMA funding to help us um, restore uh, some of the uh, erosion that occurred during the last two winters. Um, in order to, to proceed and move forward with the project, um, the city ended up uh, relocating or reallocating um, some Measure D funding from Segment 9 into Segment 7 to continue the work. As this, as this project is in construction, we need to keep it moving forward. And in addition to that, the utility crossings that were for the wastewater treatment facility also contributed additional funding uh, for those crossings. And so this project is anticipated to be uh, complete in October of 2024, but we'll probably have more uh, knowledge in the next, I'd say, two to four weeks. We're, we're definitely um, at a critical time with the amount of work that's happening out there. Uh, before determining the exact date, because we're really excited about trying to get a, a reading and cutting date as set for this project. And of course, the next big project that we have is uh, the Murray Street uh, Seismic <laughs> Retrofit and Barrier Rail Project. Um, as some may uh, recall, we, the city, we took this project out to bid last year um, and we only received one bid. Our estimate, our engineering estimate was essentially half of what uh, the um, one bid that we received, I believe, was $58 million for this project. Um, since that, since then, we've been working with Caltrans and FHWA uh, because this project um, is, is required as part of the highway bridge program. We all want to see this thing implemented and retrofitted. Um, and so we've been working with them uh, to rebid or revise the, the plans and specs and put it out to bid. And so the bids are due uh, in August on August 29th. Uh, our new estimate now is around $50 million, but working with our funding source, um, we have confidence that um, as long as we have a competitive process and hopefully get more than one bid, that uh, Caltrans and the Highway Bridge Program will help us uh, fill that funding gap. There is a there is a part of a local match though that still goes with that, that we're still working through. Um, and so more to come on that, but we're, we're feeling positive that if uh, we get bids this uh, later this uh, month, that we'll be able to get in contract uh, with a contractor uh, shortly thereafter. So you can see our estimated construction schedule, uh, schedule we put down as fall of 24 through 26. And so it's roughly about a two, two and a half year timeline. Uh, and one thing to note that we put on there is that the eastbound traffic, the way we've at least the design uh, elements now is to maintain eastbound traffic during a majority of the construction. But we'll, we'll, when we get a contractor on board, the de those kind of details will be worked out. And we'll, again, we'll be working with the county as well as RTC on messaging um, the impacts of this project. Some of the other things I wanted to highlight about this project too is kind of the improvements that you see there. So beyond this, the structural upgrades for the seismic retrofit, you're also going to get, uh, if anyone has biked along Murray Street, uh, knows that we have a high curb that's out there, about 8 to 10 inches, and a very narrow sidewalk, as well as barrier walls that don't allow you to actually see the harbor or the ocean when you're driving by. And so um, additional improvements, as you can see, will be standard high, uh, curb heights, six-foot wide bike lanes, a seven-and-a-half-foot sidewalk for two-way pedestrian traffic on the ocean side, as well as barrier rails to allow for view, uh, view shed of the um, ocean. Okay, next up we have our 24-25 paving projects that are going to be going out to bid uh, very shortly. Uh, this one image is of Bay Drive and Escalona. This project actually includes Escalona, Highland, uh, and Bay. Um, we had a project on Bay Street at this location uh, to reduce a travel lane going northbound on Bay Street to accommodate a protected bike lane. And then on the southbound side, uh, reducing it to uh, have a fully protected bike lane going southbound. This project has been in our CIP for, I think, three, four, maybe even five years now. Uh, we took that out to bid last year. Uh, unfortunately, bids came in too high. And so what we've now done is we've packaged it with our, our, our paving project that are going to be taking out to bid uh, shortly. And I just wanted to highlight, um, we're excited about, re, about being able to provide additional bicycle and pedestrian facilities along Bay here, as well as their sidewalk infill that's also going to happen on Escalona. So um, all good things are coming onto the west side. Um, another image here is of the West Cliff Path Rehabilitation. So. Uh, this is another project we've had in our CIP for almost five years, uh, and we're finally being able to implement it. Uh, what's interesting about this is that at the same time as we're trying to uh, protect the coastline in other areas along West Cliff, uh, this is more towards the, the western end, and we're looking at uh, repaving the path and trying to widen it maybe about a foot while adding a lot of pedestrian improvements. As you can see in this image here, we're looking at crosswalks as well as striped medians uh, to help slow traffic down. 
Uh, next up, we have the Laurel uh, Surface Seal and Striping Project. Uh, this project um, has come about mainly due to the pure water Soquel work that's happening. The pipeline conveyance project um, has been a challenge for us in the city uh, with regards to the amount of impacts it has, um, the number of rework uh, that has to occur with that project. We, of course, support the, the pipeline conveyance project as it's uh, we partnered with the pure water Soquel at the wastewater treatment facility. Um, so what we decided to do is package a project to surface seal all of uh, Laurel Street to restripe it so that it feels more like a brand new street as of, as opposed to the patchwork that was included in the uh, Pure Water Soquel um, scope. And so we've taken that out as a city project now. And so you'll see this coming after Pure Water completes their pipeline uh, work. And uh, we have an active transportation plan update. So we recently awarded a Caltrans planning grant as well as a sustainable uh, communities for all grant. Um, I believe that we actually have uh, 800,000. So I, I see that I had 550 there. It's two different grants that were awarded. We're working both with the state and federal government to implement this uh, new update later this fall uh, with a lot of public engagement. Um, we expect to have it complete by next summer. Uh, what's really nice though, in talking with both the state and federal government, while we applied for two different grants for the same level of work, um, what we've now been able to do is work with them and we're going to be doing more demonstration projects. So it'll be really exciting to see if we can get some um, ideas out there into the into the public, test some test uh, some of these different transportation ideas, and then maybe I'll go forth with a future CIP for um, permanent builds. Okay, so future projects. So this is about three years out from here. So rail trail segment eight and nine. And here's some images um, that you can see that we've had over uh, the past uh, couple of years, just sh sh highlighting the trail next to the rail line here. Now our engineering estimate at the time right now was at 36 million, but we're about 30% level plans. Um, the EIR has been uh, approved. But um, as we go through a lot of the design changes uh, from 30 to 60, and we consider the zero emission rail tr uh, train project, there's going to be additional costs and adjustments that need to be made. And so the timeline for that is looking much, um, it's pushing things out. So we're looking at more uh, right now, estimating fall of 26 to get not only final design, but then we have to get permitting and right away on top of that. Um, so really we're, we're looking at a construction schedule most likely in 2026, which still follows uh, the ATP grant uh, that we've received. Um, Next project here uh, is a Front Street Corridor project. So as I kind of mentioned, all the development that you're, were happening, uh, that's happening on Front Street, um, the, the, the um, striping and transportation facilities have to adapt with it. And so as Metro um, has made several changes um, over the months and kind of the last year with regards to what the layout will finally be, um, we've now come up with a concept plan that uh, we're going to be presenting to our council. This is just, again, a concept level at this point, but that we're bringing back to our, our commission and our council to review and approve. But uh, I just wanted to give you guys a sneak peek because you can see in this image here, we're looking at uh, transit lanes uh, here in the center uh, to provide some um, ability for Metro to um, skip if there's uh, traffic uh, into their own lane in order to enter and leave their facility. It's Critically important that now um, Front Street ends up being the only entrance and exit for the Metro Center. Uh, please really see they use uh, Pacific Avenue. And so we really did have to work with them closely to accommodate the amount of um, ridership that we hope to see uh, at this facility. And then another great part about this image, it also highlights the Paseos too. So it's not just we're talking about the, you know, there's housing that's of course happening, the transit's happening, but then also the pedestrian facilities too, that are really gonna uh, connect our downtown from Pacific Avenue to Front Street, all the way up to the Riverwalk. Um, just south of all that uh, development that's happening is work occurring for our downtown expansion plan. Uh, our planning team, advanced planning team, is uh, working on getting a draft EIR out to the public um, this fall in hopes to have a final uh, plan for a downtown expansion plan approved next summer. Um, of course, this project is to help promote uh, housing, um, economic activity, uh, uh, beach connectivity, um, and those things. So I wanted to highlight that uh, the transportation-related items that you can see on the slide here so Front Street, we're looking at protected bike lanes. Uh, Laurel, Street ex, uh, Laurel Street Extension Relocation. So currently right now, it, it goes 
connects to Spruce Street uh, and runs along the river. Uh, the concept that you see before you here is to relocate that roadway to the hillside to in order to close Spruce Street down for a future plaza. And so um, with that, we would create also a roundabout uh, down at Front and Pacific. And then Pacific Avenue itself would be end up being a potential flex street where we would close it down for parades or any type of other um, community activity that we'd want to see in this downtown core. Um, I kind of put one uh, big thing there's a future arena. Uh, that really is a big player, of course, in determining how this uh, expansion plan will, will fully uh, come to fruition. But the EIR accommodates, includes a discussion, uh, of course, and analysis with regards to that. Again, this is a, a planning level document, um, and then that will be worked into uh, development as, as, um, as time goes on. Okay, and then lastly, I'm really excited about this project. Uh, this is a, a, a new project that came to the city uh, really in response to um, a lot of the housing projects that we're seeing. Uh, we were able to get funding from um, the Affordable Housing and Sustainable Communities grant from the state, as well as an IIG grant, again, another housing grant to help support transportation and housing, because again, those two are very closely linked together. And so, um, Late last year, we started looking at Bay Street and we were already making improvements. We have a little bit with regards to uh, the rail trail at Bay in California, looking at you know potential peanut roundabout there in the future. Um, but as we looked at this funding from affordable housing uh, um, grants, uh, they asked us to look at uh, improving bikeways that are connecting to these type of developments. And so Bay Street naturally uh, was our one of the next main corridors that we, we t uh, evaluated. And so uh, before you right here is a concept plan right now that we're working with, with Caltrans on, on how we would uh, mission in Bay. So we're really excited about this because we're hoping to get this uh, potential two-way bikeway on the west side of Bay Street, um, all the way from Escalona down to Westcliff. But knowing that Caltrans has their uh, CAP-M project that they're implementing in 2027. So the team has already been working with Caltrans to see if we can get this phase, uh, the Bay mission, uh, in, in that project in 27. And we have additional projects, uh, paving projects that will phase in the different parts of Bay Street for a two-way cycle track. Again, the goal is to try to get from all the way from Westcliff, uh, most likely to Escalona. And then we'll have to talk, determine how we're gonna finish off the Escalona to, to High Street. Um, but again, several roundabouts, looking at roundabout at Bay and High, Bay in California, as well as Bay and Westcliff. And with that, I'll hand it over to any questions. All right, um, thank you. Did, you. did you talk about uh, what coordination, if any, exists in the closing of the Murray Street Bridge for construction with the SoCal Avenue projects that we're working on? So, I mean, I have this nightmare vision of everything going east and west being shut down at the same time. Yeah, it's it's um, it's somewhat of a blessing that we weren't able to implement the project last year. Oh, sorry. Um, in that... RTC, the Highway 1 project was able to move forward while the SoCal Drive project is under construction as well. Uh, we feel that by the time we actually have to do closures along um, on the Murray Street Bridge project, most likely won't happen until next spring while we get some of the soft construction going earlier, hopefully this fall. Um, that'll give more time to let those other projects continue to build. But there probably will be a shorter frame where these are overlapping. And so we'll be talking with uh, the county and RTC on how to make adjustments. Uh, but again, the goal is to maintain eastbound traffic during the majority of the construction. Any further questions? Yes, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Director Wynn. Uh, impressive number of projects. I'm just curious, how many engineers do you have on your team? Yeah, I appreciate the question. We have a small but mighty team. Um, so on the transportation side, the traffic engineering, we have about five. And then um, the general engineering team supports a lot of the bridge work or the paving work. And so really the teams have to work closely together. I'd say uh, between the number of engineers that are working on transportation related projects, and I'll include again, Marie, of course, as I've kind of shared here, we're probably about nine, nine or 10. Well done. Commissioner Alternate Johnson and then Commissioner Koenig. Yes, of course. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Exciting projects. It's going to transform the city and how people get around. On segments eight and nine, you mentioned that there, because of design changes and also right away acquisition and so forth, you anticipate that the number, the, the budget number will go up. 
Um, and what at what time frame do you have? Do you think that you'll you'll have a better idea of what that that budget will be? And secondly, where would you think the money might come from for the overage? Yeah, those are, those are really good questions. Uh, I think I anticipate us as we go towards a more 60% design. Again, we're working closely with both the county and RTC on this. Um, I would hope or anticipate sometime towards the end of this year, we'll have more clarity as we start landing on what the um, requirements or constraints are going to be. Um, and so we'll have a, a little better understanding where we start talking about what how that impacts the cost. On the funding side, or um, that's still in question as far as where we fully get that funding. The city has committed, essentially, on our, our Measure D. What we ended up doing is um, reallocating funding for projects that were more local into Measure or, or into uh, Segment Eight and Nine in the in the temporary. Just knowing that we're going to try to put all our eggs in one basket for the time being, it can be adjusted as we uh, identify other funding sources. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's certainly an exciting suite of projects. Uh, I, I am happy that the Murray Street Bridge project's been pushed off a little bit and hope that it does start, at least as far as in uh, serious construction and, and closures uh, after we're done with Soquel Drive and uh, maybe even the uh, Highway 1 segment there, Phase 1, that'd be great. Um, I'm just going to ask about Westcliff. Um, it's, uh, I'm curious if you have looked at any do, doing any, like, um, natural feature restoration there, you know, more like we have along East Cliff, um, where it, you know, I noticed a lot of hard walls there. Um, is that just because of cost constraints? Uh, would any of that kind of work be anticipated in the future? If you are able to find more funding? I mean, isn't it, it, what, what's the elevated level of risk with a hard wall like that, that it, uh, you know, will be more vulnerable? Yeah, thank you for the question, uh, Commissioner Koning. The city, uh, I didn't mention this as a part of the presentation, but as a part of the recovery efforts along West Cliff, the community uh, did come out and have a lot of comments and feelings about what is being done along West Cliff. And so as a part of that effort with our council direction, uh, we sought and, and adopted a 50-year vision for West Cliff. That level of work was, in, uh, I can't remember how many meetings we had over the eight months, but that document did get adopted and it does talk about limited armoring along West Cliff. And so we talk about uh, limited arming as well as uh, adaptive pathways that goes towards either natural feature restoration, planned relocation. We really need to have all those options on the table. Um, but what's currently happening right now is really a, an emergency response and really kind of taking um, advantage of the programs that are before us today, because what's been a challenge, of course, over the decades is finding uh, maintenance funding uh, to uh, protect what's out there today. And so the funding that FHWA emergency opening program really allows for is to restore what's out there without um, uh, doing too much change or, or better meds and stuff. And so, but that doesn't mean that the city staff and others aren't seeking and working with the Coastal Commission on trying to uh, minimize the uh, hard armory that's out there today. And so uh, there were discussions early on about Shotcrete or some other type of natural feature restorations that may occur. Um, but it was also about the timeline. Um, we didn't want to go through another winter and be exposed as we were in last winter, which is saying additional damages. Um, but the city and I think the community is recognizing we can't continue at the same pace, as I mentioned earlier. It's really about $25 million that we're getting from the state and federal government to help support this level of effort today. Uh, but that doesn't come without uh, additional local match as well as staff resources that have been reallocated. So we were pushing paving projects out and um, we were able to get a paving project together just due to the uh, other RTC grant funding that we received and others, but um, it's been a challenge. So we would definitely be looking at other ways to help uh, protect and manage West Cliff. Great, thanks. Yes, uh, thanks. I have a few questions. Um, one, the first is about Laurel Street. I appreciate a lot. I'm a neighbor, so I appreciate the uh, post bikeway improvements that project, but I'm concerned because the law street continues to be torn up, it gets closed up, it gets torn up. This seems to be an endless process. Order. So how reliable is it going to be once this current project is done? That if the city goes forward with the bikeway, 
taping that months later, your water so shallow isn't going to be out there. It's incredible how much time they've spent digging it up, closing it up, digging it up, closing that scene. Um, thank you for the question, Commissioner Schifrin. And so uh, I can say that it's the city, and I know I've, I've uh, talked to our colleagues over the county as well. It, it has been a challenge, this pipeline conveyance project uh, for the uh, Soco Creek Water District. And we're trying to continue to be good stewards and partnerships uh, with them in hopes to get this project completed as soon as possible. Uh, they've continued to have uh, construction challenges and rework. And we also hear that from our public as well. And we try to do our best to share the, the current progress and also uh, share that with SoCal Creek Water District because ultimately SoCal Creek Water District is the owner and it is their contractor out there working. And so they're doing the inspections and review work. And so um, it, it just continues to be a challenge out there. Now, uh, our, our hope uh, and uh, our feeling is that once they are done, this opening and closing of things, and we hope this is kind of the last rework that they have to do out there, that we can go and surface seal Laurel Street because because it was opened and closed so much, the original plans we thought we could just pave halfway to the street or just um, a lane line to lane line based on their trench. But um, just due to the number of reworks that we've seen out there, uh, both on California and Laurel, but to say, okay, we need to be able to really start fresh again on Laurel Street. And so the team felt that we'll, we'll take that on as a part of a city project, uh, allocate funds, and then also make the additional bikeway improvements. And so you'll have a little bit more protected bike lanes and um, some new islands out there too in the future. That project will out. We anticipate later this year. So it's, it's, a, it's a tight window right now um, because it is a surface seal. So it's, um, it's not a, a paving project where you have uh, fresh new pavement. Uh, essentially, we'll do uh, local spot repairs uh, away from what uh, SoCal Creek has done or Pure Water has done out there. And then we'll do an emulsion um, kind of uh, material that goes on top and then a restripe on top of that. Question about segment seven. <laughs> It could be mm -hmm. there's sufficient funding to fight for the completion of the project within uh, yes, yes. Yeah. So earlier I mentioned that um we had to work strategically on the background as far as to reallocate funds in our measure D from eight and nine over to segment seven phase two, as well as work with our wastewater treatment facilities to take on the additional costs when it came to the utility relocations. And in addition to that, uh, we were uh, able to find some additional funding from these affordable housing uh, and sustainable communities uh, grant. And so there's enough, there's a little bit there too to help us get us through the end of the year. I'm pretty confident that October. I, I'm I'm optimistic that it's October. It may slip into November. I recently did a job walk um, earlier this week uh, with the contractor to kind of get more of a gauge because there has been a lot of uh, challenges, of course, along this project. And so try to see what those um, next steps are to get us towards a ribbon cutting. Um, so I am, I am optimistic. Um, they are staffing up. I think they have up to 12 guys out there a day, but um, it's a challenging site because you only have access in and out in one way. And so um, it's not it's not easy. You can't have multiple contractors out there, multiple phases happening at the same time. And so that's been a, another reason why it's been a little bit um, flipping as far as the schedule. I wanted to really support the work that's been. I think as it is now, like writers coming out from the university. That project is going. My final question has to be that had expansion, Pearl Street. That project would involve the demolition project. Project. What are the cities for aiding rebuilding, not losing that affordable? I believe the planning team is working with the county to discuss uh, what 
relocation would look like for that particular facility. Uh, so they, we are aware that um, there is the, the housing component right at the bottom of that hillside right there, and that they are trying to figure out a way to allow for that uh, those users to move into a, a new space to allow for that new roadway. So there's the plan itself, again, is a high level planning document. But at the same time, we are reaching out to the, the potential um, properties and uh, stakeholders that will be impacted. City allocated funding. Uh, I'm not aware at this time of funding specifically going to relocation. Um, again, really, it's a planning level effort at this point. Um, and then as we hopefully get to downtown expansion plan adopted, then we would move forward into those next steps as far as implementation. Excuse me, uh, uh, are Mike's microphones on working okay? I, I just got a text from someone in public saying that they could hear the, the commission, uh, commissioner, Andy Schiffer, was just speaking. Was not on. A little late out of the gate. I just want to say quickly thank you for the update and for all of your work. Uh, it's uh, pretty incredible to see the list. We get it at the city council in uh, pieces. Um, so this is, it really is impressive when we, we put it all together and uh, your ability to be nimble and addressing some real catastrophic <laughs> damages uh, over the past couple of years has been much appreciated. Also, I want to thank you for your willingness. And I know in some of these projects, neighbors have had, uh, you know, significant uh, thoughts <laughs> and um, input and your your willingness to work with them to resolve those and, and come to, uh, um, you know, uh, some mutual agreement. It really made our job a lot easier in approving those. And so just really appreciate everything. Uh, I wanted to ask one question that I've been meaning to ask, just check in with your department about the relocation of the Metro has created some, some real changes in, um, you know, the traffic and, you know, pedestrian and, and uh, car traffic, as well as the buses on those streets. And um, at first it it felt very chaotic and I was pretty nervous, but with the changes that have been made and the, the painting, it, it seems clear. However, uh, people are still kind of losing their minds trying to figure out what to do <laughs> getting around on Front Street. Um, I'm just wondering what your experiences, you know, your thoughts are on how it's going generally. Is there anything more that needs to be done? Um, or do you feel like it's settled or settled in here now? Yeah, my understanding that when we first implemented the interim operations onto Front Street and, and uh, River South, that there were some uh, signage issues, a little bit of striping that the public uh, didn't quite understand where to go. Um, but I, and my understanding is it has smoothed out over the past several months um, and that it's been actually a positive thing. Uh, as far as the activity that's happening along there. Yeah. Um, and it really came at the sacrifice again of the parking and bike lane. And that was another concern that we had too with the uh, bicycling community that were uh, have a bus bike share lane out there. Uh, a new concept again for our region. And, but uh, it seems to be, um, I haven't heard of any kind of collision history out there either. And so it's been a positive so far. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, yes, please, Commissioner Rotkin. I, I just wanted to echo Sandy Brown's comments about your accessibility as a member of the public and working with a number of groups. You, you've made public presentations to some of us and really appreciate how accessible you have been to the public and really big projects that affect their lives pretty directly. So thanks for that. Thank you. All right. Any further comments or questions from the commission? Seeing none, thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Uh, are there any public comments on this item? Seeing none in the room, it looks like we might have one on Zoom. Michael Saint. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Chair Brown. It, it appears that I may be the only one here today. Um, yeah, excellent presentation. Um, definitely have your hands full. Um, um, one question about question West Cliff. Um, um, what happened to the possibility of making West Cliff uh, one way traffic uh, like we have down towards Pleasure Point? Uh, also, number two, uh, wouldn't you be able to move uh, one way traffic uh, plus pedestrian biking more inland 
and, uh, and uh, because of the less width, 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 width that the project may project require. require. And, and um, um, as climate change continues to ramp up, doesn't it make sense to adapt to future sea level rise by not trying to save uh, a lane of car traffic? And that's my questions. And thank you so much for your efforts. Any further comments? I'm happy to answer those questions if you'd like. I'll leave it up if to you. If you'd like to. Okay. Yeah, I, I think because the discussion around Westcliff does come up about one way. And so as a part of that 50 year vision work that the city council and the, and the city staff embarked, uh, it does talk about the uh, exploration of a one way. Uh, the community wasn't quite ready to adapt immediately to a one way. And so the vision itself allows for exploration of a one way. And so we are continuing to work with Coastal Commission, our stakeholders, um, and as well as other funding sources to consider that potential um, change in the future. So it's definitely not off the table, but again, as I kind of shared earlier, we the funding that we have in place and the expediency and the mother nature winter that we're trying to avoid again, um, we went with the uh, restoration projects. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, Commissioner Rodkin. Just, just to comment on that, I, I was at that meeting of the city council where that was considered. And um, it's not that who shows up at a public meeting is everybody in the public, but it's about nine to one or something, people against the idea of one-way traffic on that street for a variety of reasons that I won't take the time to elaborate. But I mean, it, it got killed at that meeting is a fair way to say it. And it, again, the option's still there in the future for consideration, but as far as like moving to, when the rebuild is to a two-way traffic solution, and that's what the massive amount of people in that crowd wanted to have happened. They filled the room and spilled out into the courtyard. It was it was a big meeting. Great, thank you so much. All right, we will close public comment on this item, and that brings us to the end of our uh, regular agenda. We will now convene into a recess into closed session uh, and return in several hours. Correct. Okay. <laughs>the second closed session again is involving the executive director recruitment and labor negotiations for those positions and we will the commission oh. will be convening in the board of supervisors conference room for the thank you session. my apologies i overlooked the review of the items to be discussed so thank you for catching that all right so now we will actually recess into our closed session thank you so much all right are we going to do this? Was well, Steve's mic on? Yeah. Okay. Mine so that was our report out from closed session. Okay. So the commission um, concluded the closed session at three o'clock. Uh, there is no reportable action from closed session. Thank you. Thank you. With that, we will, um, our next RTC meeting is scheduled for Thursday, September 5th at 9 a.m. here in the Board of Supervisors Chambers. We are expecting a transportation policy workshop or probably not. No, we are not expecting the transportation policy workshop on August 15th. So until uh, September 5th, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.